PMM Docker to Podman in development environment, where I will be talking about uh, what kind of issues I had when started as the engineering manager developer at Percona. I actually use Podman all the time. Uh, I like OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, I try and MicroRS as well, and uh, Podman is over the place uh, in OpenSUSE as well. It's actually where I got introduced to Podman uh, first time, was SUSE, and I love it since then. Uh, you can interrupt me, ask me questions, because talk is around 25 minutes. Uh, I think I will be able to cover something just online. Myself, Denis Kondratenko, previously worked at SUSE, right now at Percona, engineering manager, trying to stay a little bit closer to the technology. Uh, my, I was working in SUSE storage, now Percona monitoring and management. Uh, a little bit of introduction, like uh, to give you some context, uh, what I, I will be talking about and why I have uh, these ideas and issues and whatnot. So Percona, it's a uh, leading um, provider in the uh, services, managed services, uh, as well as developing open source databases like MySQL, MongoDB, Postgres, and others. So we also provide a really great software to troubleshoot and uh, figure out what is going on with your database. Uh, one of the slogans of Precona and our purpose is actually keep open source open, so we completely open source. Uh, remote first company. Right now, after the pandemic, it's maybe not that uh, distinguished point, but before the pandemic, it was really great to have, to be able to work remotely for the company, and Precona is all remote. Uh, we going to have different tools, uh, for, for example, uh, our own distribution of databases, as well as operators for deploying the databases in the uh, Kubernetes. So we have DBS solutions, we have the Procona monitoring management solution, and uh, all of these tools are, uh, get together in the Procona platform where we, can we would like to integrate you single panel glass to your infrastructure, to your uh, databases and their performance. Procona mo monitoring and management, which will be in this talk, I will uh, use it as example. Uh, this, we use that to monitor the health of your databases and different services, as well as nodes. Everything that you expect from the monitoring, at least uh, we have a little bit difference there is that our differentiator is query analytics. So we analyze how, how good your uh, database is performing. So PMM, uh, a little bit of the project, it's a client server application. It's, it has the Grafana interface, so we uh, modify code a little bit to fit our needs. It's located uh, here, open source, as I said, looks like that, if you're curious. So that's that's usual monitoring tool, but the only thing that is different is the square analytic where it shows you where you have the bad queries, how much time the query took, and where you can optimize. So this is a standard uh, Grafana interface, so which we use inside. And you can find it out in GitHub. Uh, it's open source from the beginning. Uh, there is the, a little bit of architecture, how to contribute. Uh, I will stop by on this architecture. So the PMM, uh, one of the main distribution points is a Docker container. Sorry? Uh, the Docker container. So uh, this, in this Docker container, we have tightly coupled services running. And that was the architecture choose, choice on that time, just because to have to enable DBAs and other uh, DevOps people to actually run everything in one container. Do not uh, think about different services, but run that as the application in one container and be able to troubleshoot your databases, to be able to monitor your services. And that led to highly tightly integrated container where we, where we have 
different databases like ClickHouse, like Postgres, like Nginx to actually expose that. And instead of Prometheus, we use Victoria Metrics as time series database. And that's all packed in one container over here. Except that Docker, we also support cloud, so you can have the virtual image, uh, which you can run on Amazon and or locally, whatever. And that actually complicates the thing. So uh, how the, uh, how this image built both for Docker and the uh, and the virtual machines. And here we come. So that was the intro, how it looks like from outside, uh, inside. So PMM development, PMM itself, it's Golang, client server application. Uh, quite complicated as well, because you have different services to manage. You have a lot of uh, databases to actually uh, troubleshoot, etc. So it means that you, as a developer, also need quite complicated environment, right? Run. You, you run your application, okay, but then you need to bring up a couple of services, databases, and whatnot to actually get the data from them and back and forth to test it, right? So the uh, testing environment and development environment is quite, quite complicated. For example, we use Docker Compose quite heavily, at least, um, at least just historically. So that's like, for example, this is a development container, just spins the development environment in terms of it takes uh, already pre-built container, spins it out, and you build locally, this volume mounts to the uh, container and you just replace the needed services. You just replace needed services uh, online and reboot them and that's how you develop, right? You develop new functionality, upload it to the container and then uh, it starts to work inside. And that's just to, just Docker Compose to run the service, but to run the environment, it's even more than like, we have different databases, test databases, MySQL databases, all running together, Mongo, all, all of these services running just to get some real data going on. So all of this is quite complicated setup in the first place. And uh, how we build it is a couple of ways. We have make files, so you just do make environment up, and it brings you environment. Uh, and inside of this make, there is Docker Compose running that just do the Docker Compose up, or for example here, right, or like Docker exec running, and it just uh, execute. Uh, the new pre-built service inside the container. <laughs> and that's not all. This is not all our tool zoo, because we also have external exporters that's running on the node or uh, externally to the databases, and what they do is uh, capturing the data from the uh, uh, database or around it and push it to or pull it depends how your Victoria metrics works. It pull, push it, pull uh, the data from the exporter. And for example, MongoDB exporter, which uh, we have in Procona, uh, use Go Releaser to build the packages, build binaries and build container. So that's <laughs> another thing you need to run locally. The Go Releaser actually use Docker. It has Podman support, I believe, but it's enterprise feature or something. So, that's that's one obstacle on the way to for me, as I do not have Docker in the development environment to actually run it. And like Docker Compose for tests could be quite quite complicated. Here is like MongoDB exporter Docker Compose, and you can see how many services we have like one, two, three, four, five because it's uh, replicated MongoDB running there, and it's all. Uh, getting set up in fancy way, like they, they, we implement a lot of workarounds inside the Docker Compose, so everything starts up and start talking to each other. And yeah, this is quite big and complicated Docker Compose that we use for testing, which I also, as a developer, need to run. 
Uh, and that's even not all, right? So you have your container running, but when you go to release this image, you need to actually start from scratch, clean everything up, get all the sources, build RPMs from sources, uh, create new container based on the vanilla CentOS or something. And for those, we use bash scripts. So all of this shows up, it just to show you up what kind of zoo we have to, as a developer, to handle, right? It's like, I need, if you have Docker, uh, this actually, all of this environment is expecting that you have Docker, you're running Docker, and it's, then you just run make, and everything happens magically. But for me, as the, for example, new, new guy that wants to try it with Podman or for like uh, open source developer coming and trying to contribute, if I don't have Docker, uh, things start to be complicated, right? And here I will show you how complicated other things. So why I want to use Docker, right? Uh, before me, there was a talk about the clean environment. Uh, why I want to use containers in the first place. Uh, before me, there was the talk about the clean environment, and that's what I, would, I, I also would try to achieve, right? I don't want to set up too many tools inside my uh, machine. I would like to run everything in contain container, so if my development environment changes, it's only changes there. Or like, if I'm testing something, I do not mess up with the side effects because I installed some library that actually will not be in the release <laughs> and uh, that uh, uh, will break something. Uh, I also would like to run it uh, as rootless. Currently, all of this stuff is uh, running in root mode. And I would like to think about the open source, as I said, that like, if people come uh, to develop PMM, how they will run this, right? How uh, they will run it with Docker or Podman or whatever tools they choose. So what is Podman? I, I think majority of the people know that this container engine uh, that's actually running the open container initiative containers. So that's like one st standardized environment and specification for all of this from the beginning. It also operates on the pod, which is a little bit better abstractions than containers, when you can run the, a lot of containers in one pod when the Docker operates with uh, separate containers. Uh, there is really nice podcast I listened last year uh, I recommend everyone to, to listen to it as well. It's with creators of Podman, Daniel Walsh and Brent Bod. So uh, I, I have a link in my presentation. Highly recommend it. Uh, go ahead and find out more. I think since then they already released version 4, which has most of the features they uh, talk in there. And also Podman uh, right now pushed really hard by Red Hat, if you will see their articles, their blog posts, how they do that in CentOS and RHEL, a lot of documentation how to run application in Podman. So it looks like that will become some kind of default method to run containers in, or maybe already did, I don't know, actually I'm not in the same crusade, but I think this is, uh, will be maintained and keeping uh, keep in a good shape by uh, RHEL, and, uh, but by Red Hat and uh, also the community around it is quite strong and the development is going quite rapidly. So pod one is a really nice tool and set of tools actually, not just pod one. Setting up it's easy, you just install it, like zipper install, DNF install, whatever. Uh, I would need for this experiment is Docker Compose as well. Docker Compose is actually external, I think it's Python uh, script that just talks to the Docker socket. And Podman, they also have socket. Here I am inst actually starting this Podman socket, which, implement, which actually implements the API, Docker API that Docker Compose just will use. So Docker Compose doesn't care uh, what it talks to. It could ta uh, talk to the Docker daemon, or in this case, it will be talking to Podman. This socket, it starts automatically when you uh, do some request to that. So. 
Another uh, thing to consider using Podman is Kub generate play. It's actually quite interesting feature. I actually have uh, a lot of thoughts about that. It has a great potential to uh, use the same manifest locally with Podman doing the Kub uh, play or play Kub, I think, and uh, play Kub. Uh, on your local machine and then use the same on CI CD pipeline in the Kubernetes, for example. So the Podman could do that as well, generate, uh, for example, you're starting some environment pod, adding the containers, connecting them, it's working, okay, generate the pod and you have the Kubernetes manifest. So let's try uh, to implement all of this, to use Podman instead of Docker. Uh, it's uh, in documentation of Podman, they are CLI compatible, right? So the same command exists in Podman than in uh, that at Docker, right? So they, they're completely compatible. So even in documentation, they start with, okay, that's what you need, right? If you want to replace the Docker, just alias it and, and that's, that's all. Let's see if, if it's actually the case because we have a different environment here. So first of all, I tried to I actually elicit it and make environment up to see if I can really start it. And unfortunately, I started to see the issue. And first issue was Unix socket connect. So actually Docker Compose, it uh, goes to the hard-coded path and tries to see uh, where is Docker running. Uh, we already have a socket, but it's uh, names a little bit differently. So to, the way to work around this is just use the Docker host variable, uh, environment variable, which I did, and I can go to the next stage. Okay, now I ended up with another error. It's not longer the socket, it's uh, the error resolve image name. So it says that short name resolution is not supported. That because in Docker Compose files, we use like Percona server tag something, or like Percona lab tag something. And that means that the, this means that the policy is set up in the way for registry that you need to actually fool the main name, right? You need to say, is this Docker Hub or Docker IO, or it's Quayo, Kiyo, or some other repository. So this is a quite nice new feature because, like before, Docker was assuming there is only one repository, right? <laughs> and that's when when those Docker files were written, uh, they were working with Docker, but with Podman it doesn't, right? So here I have uh, the variable that I pass uh, to the Docker Compose. But another way to do it is actually to go to the ETC container registries conf, uh, and you can preload your configuration with aliases, saying that, okay, this short name should alias to this uh, repo, and then it will also work. So you either do it through the environment variable or uh, uh, config. Then it's failed on privilege port, because we have AT port open and I'm running rootless. Okay, then I just need to change it in the Docker Compose to 8080, for example, or 4443 or something, which I did. And now it's fell in a different way. <laughs> so you see that's like, I'm trying to show you uh, what was my path to, 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 uh, to use Podman instead of Docker. And that's all the Docker Compose specification, which I had the trouble even running Docker in the past because they have a different version. In, in this version, they have one set of features and that's another set of features. Here in particular example, we use a uh, column here to specify security option. And Docker way, I mean, uh, not Podman way and maybe more standard ways uh, to use the equal sign. And uh, probably during the time uh, Docker was implemented, they actually couldn't decide what, what they need to use and they implemented both. So actually it understands column and, and uh, uh, equal as well. So if you will change it to equal, it will work for both for the uh, Docker and Podman. I did that. 
and uh, now I'm failing again. <laughs> so Docker Compose actually brought up all the environment, and then it came to the phase in Makefile when it tried to Docker exec inside the container and run some of the commands there. And in Makefile, it's exactly Docker exec, right? There is this line, Docker exec, blah, 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 blah. And unfortunately, Makefile are not respecting those aliases that you have in your system. So the way to overcome that is kind of maybe parameterize your uh, Makefile. So it will not be Docker exec, but some kind of CLI, container CLI exec. Or maybe you have wrapper script, container run, and uh, instead of Docker. But I did it quickly. I just linked Podman and Docker, <laughs> and uh, it started to work. Make file then worked up. Oh, yeah, and it's running. So it took me, I think, 30, 40 minutes to investigate all the issues, figure out what I need to do. Uh, Go releaser actually were working fine. Docker Compose also was working fine with those minor tweaks. Go releaser needed only the also socket uh, pushed through, so Go releaser doesn't care what kind of uh, engine you use as well. It's success, but not fully, because when one system it was working, another system I had a C Linux, and it wasn't. So you also need to uh, make sure you are sharing uh, your volumes correctly. So either Big Z option, uh, which uh, makes the ownership of volume, or Small Z when you have, for example, in Docker container, on Docker Compose file, they have a couple of Mongo accessing the same volume, and they need access to that, and that is small z that you would need uh, to use there. So after that, on two systems I had, everything was uh, working. Is it done? No. Unfortunately, that's only development environment I have. So that's uh, now I would like to, and the development envir environment is based on my old uh, container, right? It's some kind of stable container or something. But if I would like to actually test it fully on the uh, integrational testing system or something, I need to build uh, the new container right from scratch. So I would like to build the clean container. And that has some obstacles as well, just because, as I showed you before, this infrastructure uh, that we have inside one container is uh, a little bit Die, right, so we have a lot of services that we need to pack, and uh, we're doing that installing RPM, configuring the services, starting some of the services, for example, Postgres or Terra, so it's will in the chalets, and uh, after that, pushing it down, and that is a done container. For that, we use Ansible. Um, yeah, the, the one before Ansible, uh, the one minor tweak I needed to do uh, is uh, use NS keep ID, and also the same issues with uh, the volume permissions the, uh, on those scripts that run Docker, Docker build, Docker exec, so uh, that, that, that I fixed as well. The Ansible was harder because our container was based on CentOS uh, 7 that day, and uh, the Ansible version there is quite old. It doesn't know about Docker. It just know about uh, it doesn't know about Podman. It just know about the Docker. Lately, after that, a lot like a couple of years ago, they added support. So you have some virtualization type uh, container or something. So, but for myself, I found myself trapped because uh, Ansible doesn't know about the Podman what I do, and I needed to create another Docker file, which where when Ansible runs, I just uh, push environment there that, okay, pretend that you're Docker. Uh, run all of the stages for Ansible like, like it is a Docker. Nginx I needed to fix again because it uh, runs on 80 ports. And that's actually gave me the build container, which was really cool. Uh, and as a summary, like experiencing all of this, I am questioning myself like why it should be for other developers, the same trouble, right? So I'm thinking uh, how we can make the life easier for other developers to come, like 
to the Perco Nine and borrow them or uh, OSS developer to come and actually use this because I have quite nice experience with other projects where I can go there, just make, and it works with Podman or it works with Docker, doesn't really matter, right? It just makes it. Uh, so the summary is that like CLI is really compatible, right? Docker and Podman. There are minor tweaks just because of the co Docker Compose specifications. And I think if we parameterize our builds uh, better in our scripts, then it will make it work much better. There are other tools over there to automate all of these stages like dev container, and we have that. Uh, and if you know any other, please suggest because I would, uh, I would be interested to learn something new. Maybe I will use that in, in our uh, production. But the question there is like, Dev container works mostly with VS Code. I mean, there is Dev container CLI, but uh, if I we don't like our developers use who use Veeam, who use the VS Code. Some people use GoLand. I mean, that should doesn't really matter how how it runs. So it would be cool to have some good tools uh, that will work for everyone. And Kubernetes makes all things even worse because you have another environment uh, to run. And I think that could uh, play cube looks really promising and interesting when you have one set of manifests to run both containers, container environment for you, as well as running on the Kubernetes. So look at it. Uh, here is some next step. I think uh, what I will do is uh, to figure out, uh, parameterize everything, so people start building something with make, and they do not need to think about it, right? It will detect what kind of system you have, Podman, Docker, uh, not CTL, and just do it. That's what I'm planning to do. I am a little bit over time, uh, I think. Uh, thank you for your attention. I am here all the day. Please ask me question. Uh, go ahead to contribute to PMM if you're interested in monitoring. Uh, meet me and advise me on the techniques for development environment. I will listen carefully. I'm actually really interested how maybe you are doing that. And you find out this presentation with all the links on this uh, uh, URL and as well as in my event presentation event, you can find the link as well for this presentation. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little bit of time, I think.